Hey guys, it's Ali and in this video we're going to be talking about using different lighting setups for that kind of cinematic and film look. Now obviously cinematic is going to mean different things to different people but to me it's just kind of simple lighting that doesn't really look like lighting and that's kind of the, the way I like to describe cinematic lighting as such. So we're going to be using examples from the previous video that I put out which was kind of in collaboration with Lupo. They sent me one of their lights, the Super Panel Full Color 30 soft version, and they kind of wanted me to test it and do a little review, and that's kind of the purpose of this video. So let's start with the first example, which was really, really simple. I used one light, the Super Panel Full Color 30, and I used it as a side light, and I really wanted to go for that kind of high contrast look where you can see one side as super bright and the other side really dark. In terms of the color tone, I went with a light amber color preset that is quite simple and easy to set up on the super panel. For this, I placed the light about two to three feet away from the talent. The brightness was set to around 90% or so, so it wasn't even at full brightness. And I was shooting at f2.8 at uh, ISO 640 on the Sony A7S III. So that's kind of the side lighting setup that I went with for this look. Now the Lupo Super Panel 30 Soft is already a soft LED light, but I added even more diffusion with a softbox. I also added a bit of haze to add a bit of atmosphere to the room. Now for the second scene that you can see here, I used a few different lights, but my key light was the overhead light. This was, again, the Lupo Super Panel 30. And this is really where this stands out versus the Aperture Nova. Now they're both kind of similar in certain ways. They're both full RGB color lights. They both have very high color accuracies, but the, this really stands out because it's a lot lighter than the Aperture Nova and it's slightly cheaper. Now for the fill light, I used the Aperture Nova and I bounced it on my white wall and again through a diffusion sheet on a five by five diffusion frame and a grid. And I only set that up to maybe like 50%. So I wasn't using the full intensity of the light. And that gave me a really nice kind of fill light, really soft and even look. So the Aperture Nova is slightly brighter at 9000 lux at one meter at daylight temperature, while the Super Panel 30 is 4000 lux at one meter at daylight temperature. So if you want that extra little bit of brightness, then uh, the Nova will be the one for you. But here is the huge difference. This weighs a 10 point four kilograms or so, and this weighs only 3.7 kilograms. So it's gonna be a lot easier to rig this up for like an overhead lighting setup than it would be for the Aperture Nova. And just like dragging the Nova around is kind of sometimes difficult, especially if you're working by yourself. I've been taking it to lots of different shoots and the case on its own is just massive. So if you can live with that, maybe it's not so much of a problem. And if you have the tools to rig a really heavy light like the Nova, then obviously this is not an issue for you. But for me, because I operate in small teams or sometimes it's just me, uh, I kind of really prefer and keep going for the super panel because it's just a lot easier to do that overhead light and setup. So that was kind of my key light. I added a fill light with a four foot quasar science tube and I used Astera Titans to add color to the background. And I also used the Aperture Mini 20C to add a bit of a hard light beam. That's kind of direct into the challenge. The hard light from the back creates a bit of a separation, creates that light beam that directs to the talent. The next scene we had was in the kitchen where the talent would pretend she was ironing some banknotes. And the key light for this was really the big window that we had in the kitchen because we were shooting it daytime. Uh, we had some nice light coming through the kitchen. I did black out half of the window so we don't completely uh, light up the room. And for a fill light, we used the Super Panel 30 at daylight temperature. But I also experimented with different lighting setups, but I ended up using the daylight temperature look because it looked the, the kind of most natural. And for the background light, I added one Astera and one Quasar Science tube, both set to 2800 uh, Kelvin temperature. Had I used the Nova, it would have probably taken me a bit more time to move it around because it's such a heavy light. The Nova is slightly more expensive than the Lupo, the Nova sells for about 1600 or 1700, I believe, and the Lupo is around 1400. So if you don't need the extra brightness, this might make more sense. The other big advantage that the 
Nova has is the ability to control the light uh, via your Bluetooth so you can just connect to your uh, light through the Aperture Sidus app and you can control it quite easily. With the Lupo you can only control it at the moment from the controls on the back of the unit uh, which are over here and it's not too bad but uh, let's say you've set it up overhead and you want to change the lighting setup then you're going to have to you know, take it down, change the light and put it back up. So you know it's not perfect. I did speak to Lupo and they did say that they are working on an app that they'll be uh, releasing soon and you'll be able to control it via um, remotely via the, I guess Bluetooth again. So yeah um, so hopefully this is going to be out soon and that will make life a little bit easier. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have any questions please let me know. I'm also working on my filmmaking course which will be out very soon. I'll put the link to that in the description below and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next video.